Hello, in this video we are going to talk about vintage lenses for astrophotography. I will go over some pros and cons and tell you what you can expect and also by the end of the video I will show you a photo that I have recently took of the Milky Way with my vintage Helios 44M-3 lens. Alright, so first off let's talk about why would you even want to use vintage lenses for astrophotography in the first place. And the main two advantages of using those lenses is their speed or how bright their aperture is and also their price. So when you purchase your DSLR or mirrorless camera typically it comes in the box with some kind of a kit lens. And this is an example of such a lens. This is an 18 to 135 zoom lens f 3.5 to 5.6 from Canon that came with my Canon 77D, my old camera. And this lens is, it's a zoom lens, so it's a pretty versatile, you can zoom in and out from 18 to 135, so a pretty, pretty versatile range of zoom. But this is a variable aperture lens, so the brightest aperture at 18 millimeters is f 3.5, but the brightest aperture at 135 millimeters is only f5.6. So this is not very good for astrophotography because you will not be able to capture a lot of light. And in comparison, I have a old vintage Pentacon 135 f2.8 lens right here. And this lens has the exact same focal length as this one when it's zoomed all the way out. But the difference in aperture is substantial. This one is 5.6 and this one opens up to f2.8, which is way way better. It's two full stops of light which means that you can expose for shorter periods of time if you don't have an astro tracker or you can use lower ISOs and end up with a much higher quality and cleaner image than using that lens. So vintage lenses typically are going to be a prime lenses which means that they have a fixed focal length, they cannot zoom in and out so only one focal length but also they are typically going to have a brighter aperture than most of the kit lenses that are zoom lenses. For instance this Pentacon is 135 f2.8 and right here I have this Helios that I mentioned before and this Helios opens up to f2 which is even brighter than the f2.8 on this Pentacon. So obviously a bigger aperture is better for astrophotography because it's night time and you want to collect as many photons as you can in a single <laughs> portion of time because that way you can uh, do things faster out there and in the cold in the night and also you can use lower ISOs to come up with cleaner images. And then in comparison also to this Pentacon, I have a very much modern and very pricey Sigma 135 millimeters f1.8, which is just a beast of a lens for nighttime photography. So you can see what kind of a difference it is in size between f1.8 and f2.8. But the second major part of using vintage lenses, like I mentioned, is their price because this Sigma 135 f1.8, it costed me around uh, 14, 13, 1400 dollars or something like this. Whereas this Pentacon, I got it used for like a hundred bucks on something like this. So you can see that the difference in price is substantial. So these lenses look pretty old and at first glance you may think that this is probably not compatible with your camera at all, right? If you have a modern DSLR or a mirrorless camera but in fact a lot of these lenses and uh, there are companies that make these adapters for instance here I have an adapter screwed in if I take it off this is uh, this mount is called M42 I think and this is just a screw in mount so just screw in your lens onto your camera if you have a compatible camera but if you don't for instance I here have an adapter that adapts the M42 mount uh, to an Canon EF mount so I can just screw this on right here very easily and then I can mount such a lens and this is the same case with the Helios 44M-3. I can mount both of these lenses to my Canon uh, EF mount cameras like the Canon EOS R or some Canon DSLRs. You may notice that on this lens I actually have uh, something taped in here. These are some electronics uh, on the adapter. I have to I had to tape them because when I was putting this lens on my camera it was uh, behaving kind of funny. My camera was releasing the shutter like all the time like on a constant interval so I had to tape it up and I don't know why this manufacturer of this adapter 
made some electronics here because obviously such a manual uh, vintage lens doesn't have any electronics on it whatsoever so it's completely manual and speaking of being manual this is actually great news for astrophotography because for astrophotography you don't need autofocus you are going to have to focus manually anyway and if you're using such a lens it's actually even easier to focus uh, than using a modern lens sometimes especially if you're a beginner and you don't exactly know what you are doing just you know learning so so with a vintage lens you have a focus ring and the focus throw on these lenses is insane. It's like almost 360 degrees as you can see from the closest focus in order to zoom in all the way, sorry, <laughs> change focus all the way to infinity. I have to turn it and turn it and turn it and right here somewhere is infinity. So because the focus throw is so large and this is the same case for this Pentacon lens by the way, you have a lot of room to really fine tune your focus and also once you find your focus you can actually even tape that in on this lens so the ring doesn't change when it doesn't want it. And you know that this lens is always uh, focused at infinity so you can just put it on and start shooting the stars without fiddling with the focus and this is just not the case with model lenses sometimes because let's take a look at this uh, kit uh, canon lens that i was mentioning before right here this one has an stm motor which means that it is electronically coupled the focus ring right here is electronically coupled to the camera so uh, if the lens is not on the camera you can just turn it all the way you want and it doesn't change anything and once you put it on you don't really know which way do you need to turn it really if it's dark if you don't see anything in live view or in your EVF it's really hard to uh, do anything with such a uh, focus ring without some experience so vintage lenses in this regard are just easier to operate when it comes to focusing. So up until now we have established that vintage lenses are great for astrophotography because typically they are going to have brighter apertures than kit lenses that may have come with your camera. They are also relatively cheap so you can just purchase one secondhand, try it out. If you don't like the focal length, if you don't like like astrophotography or something because you know astrophotography is very demanding. Some people getting into this hobby may not even realize what is involved in, in, in doing that. So you can get a vintage lens and try it out and if it doesn't suit you then you can just put it on the shelf because it just looks so cool, right? But also what is the catch right here? Because if these lenses are bright so they produce higher quality image in terms of noise and also they are easier to operate because they have a lot of the focus throw like I demonstrated before with focusing and also they are cheap so what is the catch and the catch is something that you don't usually find on paper when you are comparing lenses and these are all kinds of different defects and imperfections that manufacturers don't brag about because there's nothing to brag about and these may include various things like chromatic aberration spherical aberration astigmatism, uh, flaring, ghosting, vignetting, um, image sharpness all of these factors that can really differentiate a expensive lens like the Sigma 135 which is amazing in all of those uh, and all of those really categories compared to some kind of a vintage lens those are things you won't find on paper and also if you are getting uh, if you're thinking about getting a modern lens you can just look it up online look up reviews and figure out whether those imperfections and by the way even expensive modern lenses will have some imperfections nothing is perfect you can look it up and you can see whether those imperfections on that particular lens are something that you can deal with. But this is not exactly the case with vintage lenses because vintage lenses were not made with such high quality and precision tools as they are being manufactured the model lenses right now. So vintage lenses you may see the same exact lens online for instance this Pentacon 135 f2.8 and two different copies of this lens may behave very differently in terms of some of these imperfections that I have just mentioned and the Helios lens for instance this is probably one of the most popular vintage lenses the Helios this is a 58 millimeters f2 the model is uh, 44M and there's dash 1, dash 2, dash 3, dash 4 and from what I researched the dash 3 is supposed to be the sharpest of them all but again even copy to copy the same exact model of the lens may behave differently so what I would recommend you to do is just ask the seller to provide you with some sample images so you can expect those images and see if this particular copy of the lens that you are about to purchase is um, you know behaving the way you would like and it's not some kind of a badly manufactured copy. So let me actually show you an example image of the Milky Way that I have shot with the Helios lens and my Sony a7s 2 
uh, so you can better see what kind of aberrations can really show up on such a vintage lens. All right, so here is the image. As you can see, uh, it's not this typical wide shot of the Milky Way that you may be used to. It's a little bit zoomed in because again, this lens is 58 millimeters of a focal length, but the image looks pretty good, at least on first glance. But if we zoom in here, especially in the corners, as you can see, the stars are not round at all. They are elongated and they sort of radiate from the center of an image with those kind of diagonal lines. And this is one of those aberrations that I was mentioning about. So this image is definitely not the greatest when it comes to representing round stars. And this is a very common thing that may appear uh, with when using vintage lenses. But overall, if you see this image sort of zoomed out and you're not pixel peeping, I think it looks um, pretty cool overall. So what is the conclusion here? So obviously because vintage lenses are so cheap, they are not going to perform as good as expensive model lenses. However, I think especially if you are getting started with astrophotography, they are a great and awesome, really awesome way to kind of get you started and provide you with a lens that is bright enough so you can start photographing the night sky even without the need of, of an astro tracker. And then if you want to advance and you find the focal length that you really enjoy, you can get some pricey lens like the, like the Sigma 135 f1.8. So they are good for experimentation and also if you are sharing those images online, kind of, you know, on Facebook, Instagram or wherever, I think they are going to be fine because people are not going to be pixel peeping on those platforms. However, if you want to make large prints and hang them in your living room, then I would definitely suggest uh, investing in a little bit of a more expensive and modern lens that will better represent the stars, especially around the corners of an image. So that's basically it for me for this video. I hope you found it at least a little bit helpful. If you did, please make sure to leave it a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And also consider subscribing to my channel because I will be posting a lot more astrophotography related videos and also have a bunch of videos already on my channel. So you can check out these two, for instance. And I hope to see you in one of my next videos, clear skies and bye bye.